Hi, my name is Tim with Life Coach for Dogs. I am a positive dog trainer and stand-up comedian, and I'm here to present these videos to try and demystify dog training a little bit. You might find yourself researching dog training and how to train your own dog, and have hit a point where all the information starts contradicting each other. So, we're here to help you navigate some of those murky waters a little bit. Oh man, if you are aging and you're not sure where you will be in, say, 10 years, just because if you're, if you're 65 and feeling good, but you don't know what 75 is going to look like, you know, yeah, talk to a trainer first. I, if you are a trainer, I don't know if anybody's ever come to you in that situation to, like, talk to you about that, but that would be, that would be wonderful. Because you could take in everything. What happens? What, what happens with mobility issues? Well, how do you how do you adjust? Do you use tools? Do you teach the dog? How do you control a dog? It's consideration and context, just like everything else. Like your dog is young or old, will you be able to do it? I do see in like practicality, like old person and old dog is probably one of the strongest bonds <laughs> you can have. But to that end, and that's what we had here, you got to make accommodations because like you, you don't know, you just don't know what's going to happen. And I can see myself kind of like doing this too. And I can definitely see you doing this of like, how do you know when you're too old? <laughs> like, I'm going to admit that, like, probably seven years after it is too late. Like, that is, like, so how do you face that? I don't know if maturity is the right answer. <laughs> like, that's not the right word. But yeah, like, how do you recognize that in yourself? In Declan's person's mind, I'm not going anywhere. I need this dog. Like, that is, that is an old person, like fighting for life or declaring life and like I ain't gonna take that away from you but it comes with it comes with problems and things you need to foresee. Declan is a pandemic dog. Uh, I first came to Declan a couple years ago now it's in that hazy pandemic time. He is a Glen of a Mall Terrier with an asterisk on it. I think I think perhaps the shelter might have done a little a little sales job and his person ran with it uh, like, look at my Glen of a Mall Terrier, my fancy little dog. He was just meant for me. His person was desperate for a dog. It was the pandemic. She was elderly and her previous dog had passed away. I was the second or third trainer called. Uh, the previous ones would not work with her because it was kind of too much of a liability. When I first came to him, he desperately needed to learn how to walk on a leash because he had pulled her down, had like fractured some bones. She was covered in bruises, scraped up. Um, Really, it was actually really terrible. I can see where. And like every other trainer was like, no, you can't have that. You're too old for this dog. You're too old for this dog. You, this is a dog beyond your control. And she just wasn't hearing that. So by the time that I came, you know, I just told her the way that I do things. And the fact that at the time I was incorporating uh, walks, like a daily walk package, in with the training was kind of what she needed. I could train the dog, I could walk the dog, taught him how to walk uh, like an old lady. Like we did that thing where you go like super slow, little inch, little inch by little inch by little inch uh, to where she could walk him, even though she never really did. By the time, by the time that I was called, she, she really only had, had the ability to walk long distances at all just like a few times and that was like up and down the driveway which is which is obviously above what a dog like this needs but she did like hire a dog walker so like that's like there's always an answer i don't want to it's not like i'm i'm dragging these trainers but you got to look at the job like that was actually presented to you if you cannot adequately take care of a dog, you probably should not have 
a dog. We are past that point and she has it now. It stops being about woulda, shoulda, coulda. It starts being about what can we do now? And we found a solution. And in her credit, she was willing to find that solution. Her dog had just died. She was by herself. It is not weird to need a dog. Like this is why dogs exist. As part of this, with all the regular walks that Declan received, uh, Declan's been a part of my life for the years. He knows, he knows these other two guys. Like we've, we've been walking together You've seen him in other videos, even even before he came to me. Yeah, this dog lived like a little king. He had coats, he had toys, he had whatever food that he wanted. I used to get on to his mom and be like, you know, he he probably needs a few less options because he's getting a little spoiled and picky. Uh, and she was just like, no, no, she like little toys, little coats, fancy little collars. The grooming was the funniest thing, and he loves being groomed. I know he's a little ragamuffin right now, but he, uh, I've never seen a dog that loves being pampered and, yeah, and have a spa day like this. There's real love and there's real commitment, you know, so that's the, th so with me taking over his walking, and I do believe it's like training Training can go into the head, it goes into a dog's head, but it's the walking and the exercise and the commitment, that's what kind of gels it. That was the original idea. And in Declan's case, it really, it really kind of proved the, proved the case. I don't like going by breed recommendations because it's too wide and I believe there are too many dog trainers pretending they know about genetics. My first thing I would say, adopt a senior dog. They need a home. And as I get to that age, that's what I, I hope myself can, I'll do, is just adopt senior dogs and hopefully I'll get a better handle on death. <laughs> so, and if you do go with a puppy, I'm not going to tell you that you can't do it, but you will have concerns. A dog walker is going to be important. Um, a dog trainer is going to be important. Food delivery. And just like with Declan, aftercare, you know? I go by temperament more than sizes. This is big life stuff and you can't, there's no easy answers. Um, what are your concern? what are you able to, like, tons of people are getting great Pyrenees right now, but it's like, are you willing to put in the training, the grooming, everything? Like every dog has different considerations and every family has different considerations. So there's no cookie cutter answer that is right other than just like think about it and try and have a plan. You can't plan for every eventuality. There's tools, there's tricks, there's things you can buy that can help. Listen, I would even offer you a sharp discount if you were that type of person, like yeah. please. When we kind of cover walking lessons or whatever, I kind of cover that sort of thing, like kind of early in the process where like dogs get they're just super sensitive about their feet, which makes sense. So it's like different textures, different whatever, um, especially in an urban environment where a dog is gonna come across a million different textures at once. They can, they can kind of get weird about it. If I were to have like a broad uh, criticism for the dog training industry is that the customer service isn't all that great. And it's probably because you're an animal person and a little weirdo. So you're like, you're just sitting there spending all your time with dogs while kind of hating people. If you find yourself hating people and are a dog trainer, you're kind of missing the script a little bit because it's, you know, these these dogs need people and these people need dogs. You, you have something in common and this whole thing is really just like how important a dog can be to you. I came in one day and she had had a couple falls and I came across her and was able to like pick her up and get her, you know, get her together and everything. And then the next day I walked in and it had happened again in a worse spot and she was laying there for longer. Um, and we were like picking her up, I was picking her up, I had her, all the dogs in the garage, and just like at that moment, her daughter walked in from who from New England. 
uh, had like driven through the night just to like walk in at this moment. <laughs> I remember it clearly because I was so relieved. <laughs> and um, so from there, that kind of marked marked a change. Like that was the point when when her when Declan's person had realized that something else needed to happen. So she had found an assisted living that allows dogs. That's great. I'm, I was actually kind of bummed about it at the time because I was going to miss Declan. He was such a big part of my life. But I'm like, okay, this is, he's going on to do his job. Unfortunately, uh, like within a couple days of moving into this facility, Declan's mom had another fall that was really severe. She had to be moved to another kind of facility that did not allow dogs. So at this point, now you have a dog who has had tons and tons of training and walking and time with the trainer that was spent. So there was a long line of people <laughs> saying, oh, I'll take that dog. Oh, I'll take that dog. So when the time came, I talked about it with my wife. And uh, I had said that if it comes down to it, uh, we'll go ahead and give Declan a home. And then two or three days later, it went ahead and came down to it. So uh, he's been with us ever since. And we've been making uh, regular trips to the, to the nursing home. It's actually crazy when he walks in because they, A, they all recognize him because his mom had a giant facsimile pillow stuffed animal made of Declan. So all the, all the nurses know him. It is also a definite old lady purchase. Like nobody would purchase this thing unless you were younger than 85. As soon as we walk into this place, it's everybody's like, oh, it's Declan. Hi, Declan. How are you, Declan? And he just takes on like, we've seen him here, he's a little rascal, but he just takes on a proud little stance. He stops, he visits everybody, like a little lord, and he's like, he's like, yes, I'm quite kind. He's like, he, he does that thing where he licks their shin, like he takes his time and is real gentle with everybody. It's not something like, I've spent time going old, young, right, old, right. young. He's just, he's picked up on a lot of these subtleties just on his own and through his life. Even though he is now my dog, he has a life separate from me <laughs> with like full rich friendships. And when we take him through this nursing home, these people look like they're about to cry, which, you know, you can imagine if I'm in a nursing home and I haven't seen a dog in like a year, you know, <laughs> let me have that dog. He won best tricks in a, uh, in a nursing, nursing home pet parade, which there was like, the facility already had an animal trainer. I go in again and it's a shock and a prong collar. Like people, get away from this. Like, it's cutting costs everywhere. Declan's mom passed away yesterday. Um, and he's my dog now, or he's our dog. He's, uh, we're still probably gonna take him to the nursing home. We don't know exactly what that looks like. Last week, we took him to go visit his mom for the last time. And his daughter just kind of like placed him up and placed him up at the bed. And she like placed his, placed her hand on her, on his head like this. And she like, she opened her eyes and like had a response. And she had had not had many responses. You know, I don't exactly know how other dog trainers are doing it, but I don't think a lot of them are ending up on deathbeds. Um, please be conscientious. Like you can't, I, I know you can't plan for everything, but try and be as honest with yourself as possible about who you are and what you're gonna face before you get a dog. And that's really true at any age. Like you can save yourself a lot of hassle if you just ask and answer those questions before you bring a dog in. Adoption is a great thing, especially if you're, if you're a little older. If you are on a fixed income, I would spend your money on services rather than toys or, or fancy food. Training can save a lot of vet bills uh, on the back end. Declan's with us now, he's, he's our family member. With his mom passed, 
it like I said, it just happened yesterday, so we're still figuring it out. But there's going to be a memorial service in spring. I figured I'd get him a little suit, uh, which is silly and a little extra, but I figured his mom would like that. And then, yeah, he's just gonna. The, the analogy I use, he goes from being a uh, like one of the campers to one of the counselors. He he's been through the program, so now he can help. <laughs> now he can help all the other dogs get with the program. And continued visits at the old folks' home, um, which will bring you guys along because it really is. It's like you should see these people's faces when a dog shows up. It's pretty satisfying, actually. Thank you for watching. We do these videos every other Friday. Uh, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. If you are looking for dog training online or in the Cleveland area, please hit the link in the description or lifecoachfordogs.com. And thank you to Declan. Y'all come back now, you're here. You're a good boy.